Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week is a graduate from the University of Nebraska's College of Dentistry. Currently practicing from Newton, Kansas, please welcome Dr. Andrew Friesen, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Friesen? It's very good, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. And please call me Andy. Uh, Andy, you're the man, dude. I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy practice today. And uh, I just thank you uh, for all the work you're sending us to Keaton Dental Arts here, man. We really appreciate it. So, uh, hey, uh, tell me a little bit. I like to start about uh, a little bit about sports. And uh, I'm a big Cornhusker fan since a little kid. Uh, uh, so you, you, you like the Cornhuskers growing up there? Or That's a great question, Sean. I uh, didn't know much about the Cornhuskers <laughs> till I went there, to be honest. Oh, you're um, kidding. You no, know, not at all. And, you know, I uh, I love sports, too. I was much more of a basketball fan Okay, growing up. And, you know, the kid shooting hoops by himself for hours on end, that was me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I still, uh, I love basketball. I don't play it anymore. But, uh, yeah, the Huskers, I learned a lot about football. I learned how the stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, becomes the third largest city in the whole state on game day. Can you I don't know if you heard that, that stat before, no, but it's, it's crazy. I bet Pretty the intense. town closes down and uh, mm-hmm. it's kind mm-hmm. of where legends are made, like even the high school oh. teams there uh, yeah. in certain little cities there and across, you know, Texas and a lot of the, mm-hmm. a lot of the states, um, you know, mm-hmm. other than California, I mean, the whole town shuts down and they go watch mm-hmm. the local high school team and mm-hmm. then such a passion yeah. for football. But I always just remember the Cornhuskers, Back with the dude, the coach, I can't even remember him, but he went on to be a senator, I think, or a congressman. But, uh, I want to say it's Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne, that's it, man. Yeah. And uh, he just held – he kind of reminded me of Tom Landry of the Dallas Cowboys mm. back in the day. Yeah. He just yeah. – you know, he's uh, very professional, but, man, he just had that team kind of like Saban with uh, Alabama's team. You know, they, they had a mm-hmm. run there for a while in the 70s and 80s, and I'm a, I'm a big wishbone guy, so I always coach my boys. We have, mm-hmm. I have two boys. I know you have – Two little girls and a boy too, so I mean that's, that's right. awesome. But yes. get that boy mm-hmm. uh, now, nah, you know, almost too with the kids nowadays. After going through all I did, and after what my boys mm-hmm. went through with football, a lot of aches mm-hmm. and pains, and you know those concussions and stuff. Who knows what that really mm-hmm. is going to leave us with? You know, I'm I'm a little. Uh, mm-hmm. I keep trying to bite my ear every once in a while, and I'm like, maybe that's from all the hits in the head from football. Oh, man. <laughs> but you know, it's yeah. like. You think it's the world at the time. Like, I remember praying to God every night, you know, before games, please let me make touchdowns. Let us win. And, oh, you know, it was like yeah. the most important thing in the world you thought at the time. And, mm-hmm. you know, years later, like, no one can remember any, you know, yeah. how many touchdowns you got and how many yeah. wins you got. It's just so weird right. how you get mm-hmm. wired that way and win, mm-hmm. win, and football and competition. But um, now, nah, but uh, the, the Cornhuskers, man, I just love watching them run that wishbone. <laughs> and I ran the yeah. same offense too when I did it because it's kind of well, easy you know. four or five plays you know but yeah yeah wow. there's a lot of people excited about the new coach uh scott frost okay kind of a throwback to those days of uh of tom osborne there that they're really excited about it so oh. nebraska's buzzing and waiting for the new football season to start oh i i hope they do great i hope they in the in the in the mix for the national championship because it's been a while and the fans there in nebraska man they're so loyal to that team mm-hmm. and um it's been mm-hmm. a while that they've had some uh you know, um, some good prominence in the league, you know, there for a mm-hmm. little bit, but now nah, good, good for you, man. And mm-hmm. so tell me a little bit about, um, well, tell me first off, let's dental up now. So, uh, why yeah. did you, why did you get into dentistry? And at what point did you think I want to be a dentist? Oh man, that's a good question, Sean. <laughs> I, uh, I did not have any idea, uh, that I wanted to be a dentist until a little bit later. Okay. So I need to back up. Can I tell you a quick story? Sure. So I didn't grow up in the States. I uh, was born and raised in Japan, born in Tokyo. Okay. My, uh, isn't that crazy? My, my parents were Christian missionaries for 18 years in Tokyo, in Japan. Okay. And so I was, I was raised over there, lived for 15 years uh, in Japan. We moved around a little bit. And it came time to come back to the States. My, my parents were about ready to be done. And, 
and they had a year to wrap up, but they said, hey, why don't you consider going back a year early? Um, so without, without us, and okay. I, so I did. I, for my junior year of high school, I left my family in Japan, and I came to uh, Newton, Kansas, basically, where we lived, just in the middle of the country, a okay. uh, small town. And I went to this Christian high school um, called Breen Academy for a couple of years. I lived with a dentist and his family. And so there's <laughs> the first, here, this, is, this is the first dental connection now. <laughs> That's cool. And they had five kids, and I fit right in as number six. And, <laughs> oh. uh, you know, so, so fast forward. That was a great year. Uh, I learned a lot. I was like, man, it was such an adjustment coming from another culture, basically, to, uh, to the middle of the country. But um, I had just finished my first year in college now, and I had done digital media, computer graphics, this kind of stuff. Okay. And I enjoyed it, but I just didn't really feel like I was creative enough to make it a career. And I remember vividly, I'm on the back porch um, of this house with multiple families gathered, and, and, uh, and this dentist guy that I knew was like a second father to me. R.J. Tippin, and he, I told him, hey, I don't really know what I want to do. I don't really feel like I can continue this, uh, this major. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me, he looks at me, and he goes, why not dentistry? And you know what I thought in the moment? I didn't say it. I thought, no way. Oh. And, <laughs> <laughs> but I respected him too much, you know, just to say that, just to say no way. And I said, oh, well, okay, you know, kind of polite at least. And, yeah. Well, it so happened, it so happened, my mom was one of his assistants at the You're time. kidding. No, no. And so it's so okay. First step, let's just go to work with her. And I can kind of ride along and see, you know, see what this is, this whole dental thing is about. And uh, I remember, um, you know, he did, he did a lot of orthodontics. He's a general dentist, but did a lot of, loves orthodontics. Okay. And he's done a lot of that. And so I remember sitting, uh, watching my mom working with, you know, this, this orthodontic patient as a kid, uh, a little bit younger than me, but, and just, I kind of was able to enter in and kind of put, help put the kid at ease a little bit and kind of crack a few jokes and just um, put him at ease. And that, I don't know, I remember thinking, That's kind of I cool. could do this. I could do this, you know. And that was the beginning. And oh. so from there, um, but it was really what, what got me in was people. It was someone that I knew that uh, who I trusted, who knew me. Mm -hmm. And his recommendation really changed the course of, of everything I was doing. I remember that summer then I, the, the thought had been planted. You know how an idea gets stuck in your head and you can't let go of it. It just yeah. kind of keeps on going. And, and my job that summer was sitting on the back of a mower. So I had <laughs> hours and hours of quiet time. And <laughs> I can't tell you how much thought and how much prayer went into that decision. But I came back to college my sophomore year the next year. And I dropped all of my art classes, all my color studies, all the stuff. I took chemistry. I took biology. And you know what? I loved it. No I kidding. loved it. And so, man, it's just been, it went from there. And I was able to finish in four years and, and uh, had my choice of, of uh, dental school. And I was able to pick Nebraska. And, okay. and I tell you what, Sean, it's been, a, it's been pretty amazing. That's ah, such a great story, dude. <laughs> man, I really love that. I mean, that's kind of like divine intervention there where you go yeah. to a guy's house yeah. and, well, this is going to be your career. You don't know it yet, yeah. Andy, but right. you're going to be a dentist and you're, right. you're going to be going with Dr. Tippin. I mean, what a, what a great, great. That's so cool, man. Uh, hmm. So so tell me a little bit about Nebraska. How was dental school? How Any ups and downs? Uh, uh, any good yeah. takes? From yeah. That? You know, um, it was a great time. I appreciate one of the things I like about Nebraska is, is the people and you have a smaller class. I think we had 42 okay. in our class. And, and I, I had the choice between um, university of Missouri and Kansas city and Nebraska, and both are excellent, excellent programs. But for me, the ones in the city and one is more of an, it feel, Lincoln feels more like a small town. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody in the city. And I was, I was a little afraid to be honest, just being alone and, it just felt overwhelming to me. And I had one friend and his wife who, they were in Lincoln. He was a, a fourth-year dental student when I was a first-year dental student. Okay. And it's amazing, you know, the difference that people make. And I trusted right. him. And they, they, I remember, they housed me when I came to interview. And, and because of that, you know, it started off with the people there. And it just kept going. Just really appreciated the, the faculty and, and the smaller class sizes. And, and what a quality place. It, the, the campus felt, uh, the, the trees, there's an arboretum, you know, it just felt comfortable, yeah. uh, felt like a big small town and I just felt much more at home that way. 
unbelievable. What about Buffett? Isn't he out in that area up there in Nebraska? Somewhere? Yeah, he's in Omaha. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How far is Omaha uh, done, from all that? Omaha's uh, an hour away, just an hour away. That's like um, L.A. from us, you know? So yeah. L.A. is an hour yeah. away, or the heart of mm-hmm. L.A., but yeah. Mm-hmm. What a trip, it's man. Funny. It's funny, though. You know, you get stuck in your in your circles, and I hardly ever went to Omaha. Um, at all while I was in Lincoln and you're just so busy studying and you're so busy doing stuff and the funny thing is I met and married a girl from Omaha okay. and now we go to we go to Omaha more than we go to Lincoln now but. no kidding you guys got yeah. some good steaks out there in Omaha that's for oh, darn delicious. sure that's right <laughs> <laughs> I gotta quit eating those because I get them delivered oh, man. man it's like oh. yeah give me the porterhouses and yeah, yeah. throw a couple oh, ribeyes in there that's, uh, that's all my corn, favorite right there, the, the ribeye. Yeah, they're all corn fed, man. That's just mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. that's so cool, dude. So tell me then. So when you got out of dental school, you mm-hmm. started as an associate, or you started your own practice. Tell me about your journey there. Sure. Well, that's interesting too. So uh, I think I've got the same theme of people, but um, so R.J. Tippin, this dentist that encouraged me to to try dentistry. You know, it wasn't long after I started. So I'm, you know, end of my first year, even second year, he's he had basically been saying, hey, I want you to come back and work with me. No kidding. I want you to come back and be part of my, my practice. And, and you know, so, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great, you know. But really, he was serious. I didn't know how serious he was. And he, again, like a father, just really, he helped me through uh, a lot of the, the dental stuff. And mm-hmm. and um, interesting thing was that my friend, that fourth-year student, that when I was a first year, this is my friend, his name's Joel. Okay. He after he graduated, came to work with RJ, Dr. Tippin. Okay. And then when I graduated, I joined him too. No. I joined him too. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, so I've got a, a guy who's like a second father to me and, and Joel, man, he was one of my groomsmen yeah. in my wedding. So I'm, I get to practice with people that are like family and, you know, I was able to, to have a pretty clear path from the beginning. I think I was one of the first people in my class to commit, you know, to have a contract and um, the practice management guy I still remember you couldn't believe he's like you're signing something already and I think I was like a sophomore you know but it's like no I know where I want to go you yeah. know, I just, um so it's it wasn't quite the normal path um you know because a lot of times you don't even, you hardly know what you're doing until you get done but but man I had it I had it laid out for me yeah. pretty early you really did, man. From the eleventh grade on, you kind of had it. Mm-hmm. That's like mm-hmm. me in the eighth grade. My brother, he was going to dental school, and I was the youngest of four boys. And okay. he was like, "Sean, you're going to be a dental tech," because I was all into sports. I wasn't the smartest mm-hmm. or sharpest tool in the mm-hmm. shed, and so mm-hmm. I, I was, uh, you know, not really into the school thing. But he goes, "Sean." I'm going to be a dentist. You can be a dental tech and we can work mm. together. So I kind of, for me, and he was making my mouth guards for football and stuff, custom nice. yeah. suck downs and, you know, mm-hmm. everyone else had these boiling bites. And I had this mm-hmm. custom mouth guard nice. that I could talk perfectly. Nice. And you know, the, the, the refs would always go, you got a mouthpiece? And I'd have to show them, you know, because yeah. I didn't have the yeah. strap. And then nice. uh, they made nice. rules. You got to have a strap to the helmet. So we kind of finagled that. But yeah, it's kind of neat, man, that mm. uh, how you mm-hmm. kind of knew from an early age age and then you're kind of set even going through dental school that hey i got a job and everything's set up mm-hmm. with a dude i really respect and love and mm-hmm. so that yeah. that's so neat so so what about in your practice tell me a little bit about your practice you got so there's three practicing dentists tell me uh, how many dentists how many hygienists what kind of staff you got tell me a little bit about that if you could oh yeah um i'll tell you what we've uh, we've got more than three we've got uh, we had seven at one point i think we're we're back down to, to five six at this point now but um, and a and hygienist, it's hard for me to count. Um, <laughs> probably about, you know, we, have, we, we run seven hygienists at a time and try to get four, four doctors at a time. That's so um, cool. So it's a bit of a bigger place. Yeah. But, you know, you know, we've managed to have a, a more of a family culture and, um, you know, just to have a bit more joy as we're working. And um, as, far, as far as staff goes, we've got a you know, fully staffed front desk and, and sterilization. We've got a full time. Uh, IT guy and uh, uh, a couple couple assistants for each doctor plus some some floating assistants and so we've got this big family that's pretty close to fifty people. No kidding. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was wondering. You guys are crushing it, man. It's like, damn, yeah, <laughs> I thought you're just a machine. No, no, not just me. It's just, it's definitely not just me. Oh. Uh, but it's just it's a lot of fun and I'm grateful for you know the chance to we we juggle some some schedules a bit. So like. Now, for example, on Tuesday, Thursdays, like today, I start at noon my time. So I guess that'd be 10 a.m. your time. Okay. Um, go to six, you know, so six hours, work the afternoon. And, but I have the morning off. 
and uh, more of a traditional schedule Monday, Wednesdays, where we're in at 8.30 and uh, out at 5.30. But, and then Fridays, uh, I work every other Friday myself, but um, we go from 7 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon, just work straight through and get to be done a little early. Oh, man. And, uh, and no weekends, so, right? No Saturdays? Correct. Right? That's right. Oh, correct. Good for you, man. That, that's the a... time to spend with my family, you know? So. Oh, absolutely. No, that's huge. And uh, that is just neat, man. Uh, full on. Uh, that's a cool schedule, too, man, for having every other mm-hmm. Friday and just a short mm-hmm. one straight through. Mm-hmm. I kind of mm-hmm. do that, yeah, too. I'm pretty grateful. Yeah, that, that's so neat, man. So tell me a little bit about on the practice. So how does it work mm-hmm. with patients coming in? Is it just kind of, mm-hmm. you have certain mm-hmm. doctors that are specializing. I heard Dr. Tippin was doing a lot of ortho back in the day. Is that old yeah. school ortho or is he doing uh, any he of the newer stuff? Sure. Okay. You know, tell me. And I, it's funny. I wish I could tell you more of the ortho details, um, <laughs> but he's got, so he does, he's done it for 30 years and he's always learning. He's always working. We've actually hosted some CE courses um, okay. called Practical Orthodontics, and anybody people come in, docs have come in from both coasts and just uh, sat in. And RJ is not the main speaker, but he facilitates a lot of it. And, okay. and we have a couple other of our docs that are doing ortho too. So there's three three here that do the ortho, and so I figured, hey, <laughs> they don't need me. They don't need me, and yeah. I've, I've let them do that. But but yeah, so Joel and I kind of do a lot of the adult stuff. We've got a couple uh, a couple other docs that working with kids more. Um, Joel and I will do implants. I'll do some tissue grafting. Um, you know, we really enjoy getting to, getting to do the things that we like. And as a group, there's room to do it. You know, we don't all do the same thing. Uh, so it allows us to kind of, to focus on the things that we enjoy. That's so cool, dude. What about, are you fee for service or you take much insurances? Tell me a little bit about that. You know, at this point we do take insurance and, uh, able to take a, a couple different types, not, not every single one, but we, uh, at this point, I've modeled more of a more of an insurance practice and been able to kind of plug in with the surrounding community a little bit more because of that. I think there's a lot of big corporations uh, down in Wichita that uh, they have the insurance and we're able to help and, and serve them that way. So cool, cool. So tell me a little bit about what procedures you like doing. What do you like sink mm-hmm. implants? Are you mm-hmm. like crown mm-hmm. preps? What mm-hmm. do you like to do? And what don't you like to do? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know. I think one of the things I've enjoyed a lot, I, I learned how to do some, some soft tissue grafting. Okay. Um, Dr. Uh, Pat Allen down in Dallas, this really has a great course, but, um, you know, and I'm regenerating tissue. So many times when you're doing dentistry, you're drill and fill, right? You're, yeah, exactly. you're, you're taking out the bad stuff and, and filling a hole. And it's, I felt like when I was tissue grafting and I was regenerating, I'm growing, helping grow better tissue. And that was kind of exciting. And, and implants are fun too. It's the same thing, you know. You're you're restoring something. You're putting something back in. And um, but, you know, growing up in an Asian culture, I think I realized I I, you, I saw modeled for me how you take uh, joy and interest in the simple things like yep. these you know, over overseas. I mean, these guys are they're doing such tasks that might seem menial, but they're taking pride in every little bit. So like every movement is is purposeful, and and you're not wasting anything. And I love that in dentistry. You have the chance to work at just having an efficiency of movement. You talked about crown preps. I like that. I love, I love the art of, of just shaping to structure um, and getting the chance to, to take joy in the simple movements um, and caring for people is really what it comes down to. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, it, it takes talent for sure to be a dentist, but it takes a lot of mm-hmm. – uh, you know, mindset with, you know, just the mm-hmm. psychological part. I mean, you're with people mm-hmm. every oh, day man. and it's, a, uh, it's, mm-hmm. you know, you're wearing several hats, man. And I've done mm-hmm. this uh, for 30 plus years too. And I just, mm-hmm. I've been to a few dental practices in my time and it's just, uh, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. amazing, you know, what you have to go through and just the psyche that you have to have mm-hmm. and to be positive, to just keep up. I mean, cause it, mm-hmm. it can wear you down, especially if you don't, you know, mm-hmm. spread your time out properly and, you know, take care of yourself mm-hmm. and your family. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not mm-hmm. all about work, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. But dentistry is so rewarding when uh, you mm-hmm. do it right. But, uh, oh, oh, man, good for you, man. That, that sounds like you really got it. Now, over in uh, Japan now, man. Okay. So can you speak fluent J- Japanese and stuff or? You know, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. It's, uh, so cool. it's such a layered language. You know, there's levels of formality that, um, you know, if I'm, I'm going to speak to my boss, you know, it's just going to be these, these formal uh, phrasings, these formal terminologies, and it's totally different from how you'd speak to your, your buddies when you're hanging out after work. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in that formal business Japanese growing up, so I, 
I'd have to add that and plug that into my vocabulary. But but I love meeting people in the states who who are Japanese, and I love speaking to them. And I sound like a native. No kidding. I, I bet this <laughs> about a perfect accent because I grew up there, and so it, it's I love. You know, learning more. I'm still learning Japanese as much as I can. I still have friends and missionaries and friends that we support uh, over there, and I try to get back, man. Every every two three years, I really That's so cool. Say say something to me. In, say something to me in Japanese, like Thank you, Sean, for giving me the chance to be on this podcast and to talk together. I'm really enjoying it. Dude, um, that's sweet. That's basically what I said. You know? That's so cool. Dang, man. So <laughs> I took two years of Spanish and I can only say a few bad words and that's it. I oh, just man. never skip. <laughs> but no, that's so cool, man. And I love the Japanese too. They're great people. And mm-hmm. we do mm-hmm. we buy all our porcelain from uh, a company in Japan that's called Noritaki mm-hmm. and they've been around doing China and stuff for hundreds of years, I think. And just a real class act yeah. and just they're so humble and just they're so yeah. nice in their quality, man. They got like the best yeah. quality oh, and yeah. everything. I've toured that factory. I've been there. Oh, you're in kidding. Japan. Uh, I've been there. Yeah, it's amazing. Every time they come every year, they bring me, I look over to the right of my uh, little wall unit, and I got all sorts of mm-hmm. China plates and teacups, and it's mm-hmm. all from mm-hmm. Noritake, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I'll to bring that home one of these days. I just look at all there this stuff. Go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, well, tell us tell us a little bit about um, some of your marketing strategies you do there at your dental practice. Um, yeah. Do you do mailers, social media? I heard you working with the public sector. I think that's a pretty, really neat thing but tell me tell me a little bit about that if you could yeah absolutely you know again i'm i'm blessed in that i do a lot of just showing up and, and working with people and i don't have to think through too much of the strategy but but yeah we do some mailers and we'll do uh, some billboards okay um but yeah I'm, I'm most amazed at how much word of mouth now we live in a small town mm-hmm. and so it really comes down to if you if you take care of people and you treat people right yes. then they'll hear about it Yes. And if you don't, <laughs> they'll hear about it. Yes. And so many times I'll, I'll sit down and say, you know, how would you hear about us? And, and I don't hear, oh, your social media. I don't hear, oh, I saw your sign. I hear so-and-so told me, you know, I, that, hey, this is the place to come. So, that's so you know, cool. that, yeah, I'm grateful for that because I know that's the, the most important and it's free. It's free. It's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, most of my, when we do these podcasts, uh, nine out of 10, it's word of mouth. And it's same mm-hmm. thing with me and my lab. You know, mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. the doctors peer to peer. Hey, Sean's mm-hmm. got a pretty good lab out mm-hmm. there. You should try them. And mm-hmm. it just goes mm-hmm. so far. And with, you know, patients, mm-hmm. if you're taking care of people and it's just the golden rule, man, you just mm-hmm. treat them good yeah. and you, yeah. uh, it'll go far for you. They're going to tell people and those mm-hmm. people are going to tell people. And it's just, it's mm-hmm. just the way it should be and then opposite mm-hmm. when the staffs are not real nice and just it's kind of you can mm-hmm. tell when they don't care and the it's just going through the motions and mm-hmm. you're not going to have a lot of people talking about you and a lot of people like are not going to be you know saying how great you guys are but just treat people mm-hmm. good and just try to be genuine mm-hmm. and uh that's that's nine tenths of it. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, and for a dentist, yeah. you don't even have to be the greatest dentist. I mean, if you're trying and you don't mm-hmm. hurt them too much, uh, mm-hmm. but if you just mm-hmm. do the good deed, man, and just try to take mm-hmm. care of these people, because you know we all have our issues. We all have you know things, and when you're going to your medical doctors or you're going through your dental, you know, to visit the dentist, and it's just something. Um, it's just so important, you know, that you just mm-hmm. have the staff there and, you know, that mm-hmm. all we're on a team and it's kind of neat. And the, the ones that are practicing that way, they're the successful and really kind of um, it's not like a job, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of these things, mm-hmm. you know, 33 years I've been doing it and you have it to where I was at the lab from six to six every day for mm-hmm. many, mm-hmm. many years. And so wow. were my, you know, technicians that I worked with. And then when I started my company about 16 plus years ago, mm-hmm. it's the mm-hmm. same thing. We're here longer than you're at home with your family, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. the people become your family here at work. Yeah. And so you, you kind of all work together and it's just, yeah. um, it's a neat thing when, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, on the same game plan and just the same wavelength. And it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of neat. Um, 
you know, where when you go to work where it's not work. And I just, I know, some, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people out there, they go to work and they hate it. And I remember when I worked for somebody, <laughs> I always was mm. like, oh, this manager or this guy, you know, oh, oh I wish I could be, mm. you know, this guy and doing this. And, but overall, it was a pretty great experience. But I can mm. see how people, companies, the way you can get political and it's like, you know, stab you in the back and it's all out for one. And I don't like that. And so when I started my mm. company, I tried to bring everyone together and keep everything real mm. transparent and treat mm. everyone from, you know, just like in life. You know, you treat the janitor, you treat mm. the guy in the street just like you do your boss or any peer yeah. that's up. I mean, cause yeah. you, you need to do that. You just, I just feel, and um, I mm -hmm. just think uh, you, you, you know, it's neat when you can work with at a place that you enjoy working on the people, you know, people are going to have bad days and all that. And, you know, we understand that. And, you know, there's no way around that, and, but mm -hmm. you stand for them, you help them out and times are down and it's just kind of yeah. neat, man. Uh, I love it. I love it. I was in here. I was a little bit late on traffic. I'm telling my people, call, oh, man. Yeah. call Dr. Fries and tell them now I'm running 10 minutes <laughs> late. It's like uh, traffic <laughs> on Pacific Coast Highway. It's like, oh, yeah. so I'm like, oh, here's the day that I leave at the last minute to get there. <laughs> it's just, uh, so sorry, I was a little bit late on the start of this, hey, but no, um, no, no. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So, dude, tell me a little bit, what's like the latest piece of equipment? You guys got a comb beamer there or something? Tell me yeah. about something. Yeah, the latest equipment you guys have got at your practice. Yeah, we picked up a cone beam, which is tremendous yeah. for you know, for the implant stuff, and it's amazing. You know, I, I tell my patients too, hey, I can do virtual surgery. You know, I can pull up your scan and I can see where I'm going to put the implant. And I can find the exact implant I'm going to be using and and see if it fits. Yep. And see, and it puts me at ease. It puts them at ease. It's that's just tremendous. So really. Really love that piece of equipment. And we just uh, upgraded to some Cavo electric hand pieces. Okay, uh, we've been, great. oh man, yeah. I, we've been air driven for a while and, and it was just time to upgrade. So we decided to just make the jump. And uh, I've really been impressed with that and the consistency. And, and I'm a gearhead. I sure do love uh, playing with fun, fun toys <laughs> like that. You know, and, that's so um, I think that's one of the things that's drawn me to dentistry is you get to tinker and and uh, I love all the different things, in implant systems, and you know, getting to figure out how all that fits together. I just think that's cool. So, what, what kind of implants you like sinking mostly? Just different, depends you know, on the implant. Yeah, I like um, BioHorizons right now. Really, okay. really appreciate those. The tapered internal implants is the ones we're using right now, and and uh, just the way they go in and all their just different prosthetic connections. It's just and they do a good job, and it's easy. And uh, so, I've uh, yeah, I've been a fan. No kidding. Tell me about your grafting now. How did you learn that? And what on um, yeah. CE, maybe start off with some of the implant CE and tell me about mm -hmm. the grafting because that's so important. Like so many mm -hmm. guys don't have mm -hmm. the bone and you got to graft, mm -hmm. man. And it takes a little bit of time to come back and see, mm -hmm. okay, now let's mm -hmm. sink this uh, bad boy. But tell me a little bit about your uh, CE journey on, on some of the different procedures that you do. Absolutely. So I think the first big one on the implants was down in Oklahoma City. Uh, Tom McGarry does a a uh, implant kind of mini mini residency, okay. mini residency, and uh, so it's four weekends. And you're going in for for a Friday, Saturday, um, both times, and he walks you through anatomy. He walks you through um, technique and complications, and really, you come out of that feeling pretty pretty good. And he's just really hands on and a great clinician, and and um, and you're actually working on cadavers, so you oh, you kidding. get the chance to you to place implants. Um, in a human head, you know, these, <laughs> and it's just, it's, everything's very respectful and done well. And, yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, man. How's, it how's was, that work with a cadaver? That'd be scary. I'd, I'd oh, be scared just know, on a it, regular it, live human. Like, <laughs> oh, no, that's not, oh. It is a little, like, you have to be like, okay, wow, this, and you have to, I don't know, be a little clinical, I suppose, because, but it's just the head. It's just the head. Okay. Not the rest of the body. Okay. And, uh, and, and how's so that work? They got to be a dentalist in certain areas, or do you extract yeah. and then have? No, you do both. You do both. They, a lot of times they are a dentalist in some areas, and then, but you can also practice extraction technique and work on some stuff. And but you take it out, and, and one of the things we learned about was was doing immediate placement. And so, okay. what better way to just take the tooth out and, and get a feel for working with the bone uh, than doing it on a cadaver? So, no kidding. I mean, you ever that was really 
awesome. Oh, that is such a neat thing, man. I mean, that's mm-hmm. really hands on and working mm-hmm. on the real mm-hmm. deal instead of, mm-hmm. you know, just theory and kind of seating up on the screen, you know, but to mm-hmm. be able to do hands on in the mouth, that's freaking huge, dude. What about, mm-hmm. yeah. What about any minis? You ever sync any of those little immediate minis? Those yes, are, yeah. I have. Yeah. I've used those under dentures. Um, I don't tend to use them for crowns. Yeah. I really love the ability to control my own emergence profile and, and, uh, you know, they, they are a wonderful tool when used well. I've seen minis fail. I've seen minis last for years. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's and, and honestly, any implant, I, I've come to realize there is no bulletproof solution. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know people are going to brooks and they're going to clench and they're going to destroy whatever you put in there. And <laughs> yeah. oh. I, I maybe sound a bit pessimistic, but I feel like there's so much of that going on right now. And I, I see it all over the place just. You know, people cracking teeth and people breaking stuff and so so really I've, I've i've come to the point where it's like okay let's put in enough let's make sure we're overbuilding this let's not try to cut corners even though i i might kind of cut you know put in less just because oh i don't want to make you spend more more yeah. money but no really it comes down to man you got to respect the mouth and absolutely a, and you know, some a of, stressful place absolutely and some of the best guys out there i mean Sometimes they, you know, they fail and it's, it just mm-hmm. happens. You have to put them to sleep mm-hmm. and, you know, try to find another site there. And mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just, it's not the end of the world. And, you know, what, right. about, what about like sinus lifts? You ever do that stuff yet? Oh, or no? man. You know, uh, not scary. yet. That's scary. No, it is scary. It is scary. You <laughs> I know, just and, watch and that, I mean, man. And I, I can't oh, even imagine it. Ah. You know, part of me, part of me wouldn't mind trying, but then it comes down to, okay, who do you want doing the procedure? Do you want me, the guy who's done it a couple times? And, yeah. You know, I'm pretty good with my hands, but but how about the guy who's done it a hundred times exactly. just last month, you know, or whatever? So, so you know, one of your questions was, do I do I outsource stuff? And absolutely, I, I sure do. And I think so much of practice is you figure out, okay, what am I comfortable doing, and what am I good at, and what am I reasonable at? And you can give the patient some choice in some of this and say, hey, you know what, uh, I'm pretty confident in this, although I haven't done that many of them. Or you can say, you know what, your case, yeah, go see my buddy down in Wichita, and I've got a you know, periodontist friend, I've got a oral surgeon contacts that I really trust, and so I've got a team, and they help me on some of my stuff, but then I'm, I'm able to say, hey, you know, to my patients, you go see these guys, and they'll, they'll take care of you in ways that, that I can't, and I can look at them and smile and say, it's because I want the best for you. Oh man, that's a, that's such a good attitude and that's just such a good thing that you sleep well at night because of that. And mm-hmm. so many dentists I see mm-hmm. and I know them real well and they're mm-hmm. pushing it a little bit too much, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm a, I'm a guy, but I'm going to do it all. But do mm-hmm. what you do best and keep yourself out of any kind of future litigation or whatever. Not mm-hmm. that that's going to happen, but you want to mm-hmm. sleep well at night. Don't, don't push it, man. If you're not comfortable doing that endo, just, you're going to have to tell that patient, you know, you're going to outsource mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. it's just, I know some d- d- patients, oh, just do it. And that's mm-hmm. when you get mm-hmm. uh, getting your head over the, and under the water a little bit too, some, too much sometimes. But mm-hmm. well, tell me, uh, Dr. Friesen, do you attend uh, many dental conventions or gatherings? Tell me a little bit about that, if you could. Yeah. You know, I've, at this season of life, and you talked about it at the beginning, when you got kids, young kids, and there's so much time going into that. So I haven't been able to do as much as some, although I have gone to with the Greater New York Dental Meeting early on and enjoyed that. I've been down to some of the Midwest dental stuff, and it, it's so neat to to network and to see these other people, and it's so encouraging to see people that are going through the same things that you're going through. Um, but I, I, I'm more of a homebody right now. Okay. You know, this season of life, I tend to not get out as much. Um, even sees, I try to keep them as local as I can. Um, yeah, just to not be gone as much from family if I can, if I no, can help. No, exactly, and especially at your age, it's a great age. Your kids are, uh, your son's like seven, and your daughters mm-hmm. are four and two. Or got it, yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, oh, those it's are great. A, those are great years. What about that yeah. boy? Is he gonna you gonna get him any? Uh, what, what's he like to do? Any any sports hmm. yet or anything? You know, we're gonna try him out in some soccer uh, coming up here this great. fall. We'll see what he thinks of that. He is a he's a Lego maniac. 
Legos. <laughs> oh, you're you. kidding. You got to bring them out oh. here. We got Legoland out here right in San Diego, right, right next to us. And oh, they, actually, go. they actually got some little rides. I was trying to get my wife to go. Mm-hmm. She goes, Sean's for mm-hmm. kids. I go, they got some roller coasters. They got a couple <laughs> rides, baby. They, they got yeah, a- that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Uh, it's kind of neat. I've never been there, but uh, I go by it all the time. So, mm-hmm. um, Tell me about uh, your thoughts on new technology in dentistry, like impression scanners, CAD mm-hmm. cam, anything mm-hmm. like that. Any mm-hmm. thoughts about that and maybe bringing it in in the future? Or what do you think? That's a great question. I think it's wonderful. I mean, everything's going digital. Um, you know, we had a we had a run with the CEREC uh, years ago. Okay. And I, uh, I went away from it because at the time, it wasn't strong enough. It wasn't strong enough. You know, and I, I'm a big I like the Bruxer. I like those KDZ Bruxers you guys make. Beautiful, baby. And, uh, you know, strength and uh, the more I see people, you know, parafunctioning, I just, uh, at that time, that material just wasn't strong enough. I know it's gotten better. Yeah. But the interesting thing is in a, in a bigger group, it comes down to workflow. You know, if we're doing a bunch of crowns, you know, one machine yeah. isn't going to cut it. Oh, I know. You know, and so it, it makes more sense for us in a practice management sort of way to just take an impression and, I just delegate that to you guys. You do great work and I appreciate that. And I mean, as much as I would love to tinker and produce it all myself, and there's a big part of me that would enjoy that. It's just, you know, time, the time factor. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great thing for certain practices. I mean, I call them the poke and plumb town, you know, where you poke your head out the window, you plumb out of town and it's like, you only got, two or three patients a day or four mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. you can block out two hours or so per patient and right. do a single or two and mm-hmm. I think it's great and know uh, it's just mm-hmm. uh, it's a neat mm-hmm. thing but um you know it's something uh, to each your own and uh, it's it's evolved too I mean you know mm-hmm. to where uh, it's just uh, the aesthetics and and some of the blocks are getting better and better I mean yes God you should have seen that stuff 10 years ago and they're posting that stuff mm-hmm. online like on dental town it looked like a corn kernel in there is like all white <laughs> yeah. but you know yeah, that's right they say mm-hmm. behind the lips it fits man but uh it's nothing they're gonna <laughs> take a picture and show a, show the oh, world wide web man, mm-hmm. because it's like mm-hmm. ah, even to some of the pfms you see in some of the older patients that have mm-hmm. had them in since the 80s 90s and these things i call them the headlights i mean they're just the value is yeah. just so popping yeah. out so it's a high yeah. value and it's like and it's right next to the core the coping where the opaque is showing through and it's just like no yep. incisal translucency and it just comes so far and even like you said our bruxer our bruxer is just so phenomenal and i think it's one of the mm-hmm. most aesthetic regular bruxers on the market mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. our bruxer aesthetic i mean it's it mimics you know the emax it's just it's yeah, so like neat those. and and yeah, the strength is, is so neat. Well, I know we got to wrap it up. You got a patient here in about five minutes, but uh, what, yes, what advice can you give some of our newer dentists just starting out, Dr. Friesen? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a great question. I, I, I wanted to give something really deep for you. Um, so, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, what I came out, came down to is like, you know, don't forget there's a person attached to the tooth you're working on. Yes. You know, and that, that's so big. And, and when you can listen to the person, you know, and you're asked questions and you're actually listening to what they're saying. Exactly. And I can't tell you how many times I heard people say, man, he didn't listen. Yeah. He didn't listen to me. Like I said, I was in pain. I said that hurt. And he said, no, it doesn't. Yeah. Or whatever. You know, yeah. like those are how you build a bad dental experience. And, and then, you know, the other thing I thought was, you know, learn to interact with people who are in pain. Because yeah. how many times somebody coming with a toothache or they're, you know, they're hurting or they're frustrated. They got a cracked tooth, whatever it is. I mean, we deal with people at their worst. Yes. And when you can learn, you know, Proverbs 15 once says a soft answer turns away wrath. And, you know, I've been able to see that play out every day where I've been able to speak kindly and gently and, and listen. And I've, I've seen people who are upset, um, who are frustrated, who are in pain, and, it, and it's given them God's love, you know, and, and been able to just be that agent, uh, someone who can help put people at ease. And I think if you're willing to, to share love like that, to care for people like that, um, you know, the dentistry comes. We, we all learn those things. Yes. But, but success comes as you learn to treat people well. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome, man. Let's drop the mm-hmm. mic on that, Friesen. You're the man. I can't <laughs> hey, thank you Sean, enough. Uh, I've enjoyed talking with you. Uh, so cool, dude. Well, hey, God bless you and your family, man. And uh, thank you for all the work you send us. And if there's anything we can ever do, please let us know. And uh, thanks again for your time uh, this morning, Dr. Friesen. Oh, thank you, Sean. I appreciate you. All right, dude. We'll talk to you real soon. All right. We'll all see right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast Show this week. 
Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.